this is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to talk about the bobbin area parts. Um, in the previous video about the throat plate position bracket, I explained about the throat plate or needle plate clamps and how they lift up into different positions and I showed you how to remove that and clean it and adjust it. So if you missed that, um, in the description below the video and at the end of the video, I'll give you links to the playlist for this uh, Regina Model 403 and that'll have all the videos about it and you can look up the, and the video about the throat plate position bracket. And uh, I'm also going to talk about the uh, bed slide or bobbin slide or bobbin cover slide or bobbin cover plate goes by many names the bobbin case the bobbin uh, positioning bracket and spring and uh, the feed dock Now, I'm not going to talk about adjusting the thread clearance on this. I'll be doing that uh, later after cleaning and, and uh, making adjustments on the machine at that time. So, I, I am going to uh, lift up that needle plate and remove it. Give us a, a better uh, picture of it here. Let's see if we... Oh, okay, yeah, is that, that looks like more light. Okay, so... Um, I think I'll go ahead and start with the feed dog. There's just two screws in the back here, but the screws are kind of soft, in my opinion. So, and, and it's kind of a weird spot to get into. So this, this uh, Chapman little mini ratchet helps me. But you can also get a stubby screwdriver, or uh, you can go over the top from behind the nose of the machine also and uh, try try and get them out let's see if my little spring driver can get back in there from behind and and uh, but I, I thought I'd do this area next because I've done uh, most of the nose part there already done the, the needle bar and the presser bar and the needle bar vibrating bracket which some people call the zigzag bracket oh shoot okay <laughs> you have to go dig that out huh it's a tricky it's a tr tricky little spot some some people take it off from behind they turn the machine around and they work from behind the machine. So, uh, all I want to be sure that that you that you understand is the springs are are the screws are kind of soft, and it's not unusual to see the slots kind of chewed up if they've been taken off uh, uh, once before. See if I can lift this up now. I got that screw out far enough. No, not quite far enough. Yeah. Guess I can try this again. The um, feed dog, of course, uh, you know, is is what presses up the fabric against the bottom of your uh, presser foot, whatever presser foot you're using, and kind of pinches it against that or presses it against that and then pulls the fabric through under the needle bar unless you're sewing in reverse in which case it pushes the fabric towards you and uh, they, they, they can get worn out uh, especially if people keep the presser foot down on it without something in between but you can pretty easily uh, just run your finger over it and feel the edges of the teeth um, 
depending on the machine, some manufacturers even make new parts like this. And you can find, like for all vintage singers, you find somebody who's parting out a machine on, on, a, on a place like eBay, or somebody told me Amazon sellers are doing it now too. But you can see that the lint gets built up in here. So uh, I take it off and clean it real good and scrub it and so forth. But you may need to take it off once in a while if you want to get in here with your blower or vacuum or brush and get out lint. But I just wanted to show you how to uh, take it off. I don't know if I can, maybe you can see that that screw slot on the top of the screw is kind of malformed there and that's from people using the wrong type of screwdriver and the wrong size they can be in there pretty hard especially uh, from the from the factory now let me see I'm just gonna tilt this back and see if my other whoops I keep forgetting aluminum's not magnetic <laughs> see if my piece fell all the way through here I don't see it. See if I can come up here and, and look it in there. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I hate when that happens, huh? I lost that I lost that set screw down in there someplace. Mm. Oh okay by turning the turning it must have been hung up on the side of the hook because once I turned the hand wheel then it it slipped out. Okay, whew. I'm gonna put the clamps back down into the down position. And the next thing I'm gonna do is take off this uh called the bed plate, slide plate, bobbin cover plate, and you know you know you push it back and it and it stops. So when you take it off, you actually want to push it forward. You want to push it up over the bobbin case and and slide it off the front. And uh, this is the tension spring that holds it on. And uh, I didn't notice it when I bought the machine or reviewed it, but it's a little bit loose. So we can take we can tighten that up. But uh, this is good to take off once in a while because there's little, there's grooves here where this is uh, folded over or cut. This one is cut. So it's a solid piece of steel and then it's milled out and it's got this little groove in here that, that the edge of the a tension spring goes into and that's what holds it down and the reason that it doesn't uh, slide off is because that end the groove is not cut all the way to the end okay but we can slide it forward off of the spring because that groove is cut all the way to this end of the plate Okay, and you can get in here with something, um, you know, a toothpick or a nylon brush or something. And uh, if you use a screwdriver like this, just gently scrape it. But lint and, and oil and stuff does get caught up in there. So it's good to, to do that once in a while. Since we're on the spring, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, show you there is a screw uh, put in from this way when the hook is out and uh, that's what tightens this but they put the screw all the way through the front here so that you can make an adjustment see it there so you're on the opposite end of the head of the screw but they put a little screw slot so this is some people call it left-handed instead of righty tighty this is righty loosey because you're, you're working it the other way but the thing is you can only go so far 
you can't take it out because uh, up on this end the head of that screw which you can just kind of see down here whoops maybe let's see if we can get some better light on that hmm right here is the head of that screw it's just a pan head screw but you, you can't back it out all the way because it hits the hook and uh, it's kind of a big deal to take the hook out and uh, usually don't have to do that unless you're going to replace the hook but you can loosen it enough to get this uh, spring off and the way that spring, it's it's not really a hole through, this has a tab that goes down, but it's not really a hole. It's like a letter C. It's like kind of a hook end that you hook around that screw. Uh, see if I can get it off here. Can't remember if it hooks left or right. Okay, there. That'll show, oops, <laughs> my tension, poor tension unit. Haven't done anything with it yet. But you see this kind of open uh, loop, I call it like a letter C, hooks around that screw. And that's what holds this tension spring into this recessed area right here. And I'll, I'll show you how it goes back together and how you can adjust the tension on it. Which is, which is really very easy. You just uh, turn that screw that's down here under the lip of the bed and tighten it up. It makes very strong tension. You back it off just a, a little bit. That makes a little bit less tension. But that controls uh, how tight your slide plate is. Like this one was loose because the screw was a little bit loose. So I'll be showing you that. Now let me set it back up here. Okay. Now I want to take the bobbin case out. And this black piece here has two little arms that go in here. The upper one just goes into a guide slot. And there's a lower one here that goes around an adjusting screw. But it slides in under the bed and there's a spring clip in there that holds it. Because it's not, it's really not screwed into the machine at all. These little screws that you see here are for adjusting the spring and, and the thread clearance between the heel of the bobbin case and the spring that lets the, the thread come around on the hook and slip through there. And I'll be showing you all that uh, later after the machine is clean. But to get the bobbin case out, we need to lift up this positioning bracket and just uh, move it over to the right here a little bit. And it has to be lifted up because of this adjustment screw that, that is right here. There's a little cutout in the bracket that goes around that. So we need to lift it up. now. Uh, you don't want to lift it by this little pointy spring, and I'll, I'll show you the spring better in a moment. But if you can lift it up in here, or I think what Singer said was to take like your tension screwdriver and lift it up right at this edge right here. See how that lift, lift it up and then push it over. It doesn't move much. Okay, but then the, the, the arm that sticks under here is now sitting on top of that adjustment screw so it keeps the bracket out of the way. Now you can remove the case. And the case is sitting up here on a positioning pin. Right here is a little fork I'll show you. But all around the hook 
is, a, is an edge or a shelf that's called the race, R-A-C-E. And the bobbin case sits on that race so that when the uh, hook is turned, the, the hook can slide uh, or go around in the circle, but the bobbin case stays stationary. And now that we have the positioning bracket that positions the bobbin case against the race of the hook, we have that out of the way. So we can just move this uh, case a little to the right, and now it's off of the race. Do you see that? On the race, off the race. Okay, when it's on the race, you, you can't lift it up because there's a groove in the bobbin case that, that goes onto the race like that. So you, you can't lift it up or push it down. Okay, so we're moving the bobbin case off of the race just like that. And now we can, we can lift it up off of the position, off of the position pin and up and out. So now you see that little that little track right here that's that sits on and below that race. And then there's a gap and then there's just a shelf like this it sits on until it comes around to the other the other side and it it gets back into that slot okay and i don't know if my camera is good enough to show that that little edge or shelf right down there is what's called the race Okay, so this flat part is the top of the hook, and this, this part here, see that, it just rests on top of the hook, but the race goes in that slot. I'll show you more of that. Now, if you want to take out the positioning bracket, the first thing we're going to do is put it back into its normal position where it's holding the mm, bobbin case and you, you do that by pushing it off of that adjusting screw and because it's a spring clip it's going to pop down. See and that's normally your, your bobbin case would be there. Okay. If you want to take it out for cleaning or replacing, you have to uh, lift it back up off of that screw. But instead of pushing it away from the bobbin case, you're going to push it in towards the center of the hook to get it over that screw. Whee! And then it's going to come flying out. So this is the guide arm, right? It goes up here. And this is, uh, I guess we could call it the spring clip arm. And you can see it's kind of tapered on the end here. And in there, I told you there's, there's a, like a spring clip screwed in. So it goes in under that spring clip. And that's what holds it in place. Kind of like that. So we lifted it up off the adjusting screw and we pulled it out from that spring. Okay. This can this can be uh, cleaned now. See, see. That's some old oily lint under there. You get a build up enough of that and this positioning bracket starts sitting up a little high and you start getting thread hang-ups as the thread comes around the bobbin case and tries to sneak 
in there if this is all gunky on the bottom or in here and this sits up a little bit high it starts hanging the thread it changes the clearance and you start getting a loop or it hesitates enough and you get a real puckery stitch in most of these places nowadays if you go and say service the machine they're just going to take an air hose and blow it out but that that doesn't get this kind of stuff out this doesn't get all that muck and stuff under there out uh, a lot of them don't even take out the bobbin case like that and you can get a lot of lint built up in this track for the race look look can you see that see so now now your uh, bobbin case gets too tight because it's pushing too hard against the bracket because it's got a build up of that lint so that's that's why I take it off to do it and uh, here's maybe you can see that adjusting screw a little bit better now it's a eccentric screw that helps you position the position bracket <laughs> closer to the bobbin and knot and I'll be showing you all those adjustments later uh, after I after I clean the machine yeah look at all that I don't know if you're seeing all that but that's why at the least you know like my wife every time she finishes a project she takes the bobbin case out and cleans cleans all this kind of stuff out right so It was just uh, turning the hand wheel to uh, move that feed dog back a little bit. And I was just noticing more, more lint that gets under here that you can't always get out, you know, with your, with your lint brush or air hose down here. So I think that's why Singer... You know, said so take your take your machine to the Singer Center to be serviced once a year. And they did a lot more things than it's just what's what's in the what's in the owner's manual. And I'm I'm going to try and show you some of that. Well, that's somebody's hair there. I'm going to try and show you some some of that stuff that is really easy for you to do. You just never did it because you didn't you didn't know about it or how to do it. But, uh, look, if an old guy like me can do it, you can do it. No big deal. You see, can you see the hook point there? Mm -hmm. Later I'll be having a video about timing the hook point to the needle point. But I don't do any of that till the machine is all sparkly clean. Okay, so look, let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and put back these pieces now, right? We can't, we can't quit now. <laughs> so, um, I think while I have these out, I'll clean them real quick. And then I'll come back and reassemble. Okay, thanks for waiting. Sorry, I'm a little compulsive about that. If I, if I take a part off of a machine, I just got to clean it <laughs> before I can put it back. So... Um, I, I'm going to start with this uh, slide plate tension spring, but I have to uh, back off that screw a little bit uh, more. Where is that? Because I, I uh, tightened it back up a little bit because it was rubbing against the hook. And I, I couldn't remove the hook. I mean, I couldn't turn the hook. So I'm just going to turn it to the right here to back it out as far as I can. Because it's easier to put this uh, tension spring back on. And basically, I'm going to...
put it on and kind of slide it over around that screw the, the mounting screw I gotta stand up here over the camera and look down in there and get it get it back on there now it sits in this recessed area and uh, see I've got one tip is down uh, inside and one tip of the spring is up so I got to get them both both kind of up onto the onto the edges of that let's see how will I do this maybe I'll s slide this over and pick it up a little bit there so I've got an edge of the spring on each side up on the ledge a little bit so I just want to go under here and now I'm going to turn it left to tighten it and uh, when you're doing that hold on to the spring because it wants to move that spring around a little bit and you kind of want to keep it centered in there and I'm going to go ahead and, and tighten it uh, just until I feel it stop turning. I'm not going to bear down on it or anything. Good. So it's still kind of centered there. Then I'll adjust that when I put the, the plate back on. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is put in this uh, positioning. I'm going to put the positioning bracket back in. I soak these in crud cutter a, a little bit and then I brush them just with an old toothbrush to get any muck off. And I always just rub a light coating of oil on any metal part that I wash like that. But if you remember that I said this part goes under a spring clip in there. So I am just going to put a drop of oil on the edge of that so that it will lubricate that spring clip a little bit. So. I'm going to go over the top of that adjusting screw and start pushing this back in there. I have to keep this end up enough to point it under that spring clip. So when I when I push it in there, it'll start going down and down and down, okay? And right about there, I'm I'm feeling that the tip is starting to go under the spring clip. Okay, so I'm just going to lift it up a little bit and push it and get it in there, maybe. There. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I want to now see if I can lift it up like that. There. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see if I feel the spring. If you don't get that spring arm under the spring clip, it won't have any downward pressure. And you can just flop, uh, flop it around real easy. So I feel it's very tight. I know it's under that spring clip. And remember, you don't want to uh, use this little finger. It's kind of flexible here. You don't want to use that to push or pull because you can bend it. Okay. So I've got that up out of the way. And this is the position I'm going to put normally in the bobbin case in. But if you remember I took the feed dog out before. And I did that before I removed the bobbin case because I wanted you to see this positioning finger. And if and if you remember this has kind of like a fork tip here that has to go up on that finger. Okay. And this edge is going to write up on the top of the hook. 
okay so that when I slide it left the race is going to be right inside that groove so I'm going to set it up there there we go on the finger get get the finger area lined up get this back edge on the top I'm going to try and lift it up level and then slide it over to the race so on the race right off the race yep. get that position finger get this top edge on top of the hook and then move it left onto the race the, the way whoops <laughs> The way you can feel confident that you're properly on the race, okay, is to to hold the bobbin case in place with your finger. Now don't go far in there and get your finger on the hook point. And then just uh, slowly turn the hand wheel so you see that it's riding on the hook, okay? If you're not on that hook, you're, you're going to lose it. It's going to like pop all around and stuff. Okay. Now, since I cleaned this and before I put it back in, I'm, I'm going to just take a drop of oil on this old watercolor paintbrush. Right? And I'm, I'm, I'm going to brush it into that slot where the race goes. Whoop. Might as well do it on camera. <laughs> okay, now I'll show you how to oil the race when it's all assembled. But since I had this off and that degreaser strips every bit of oil and grease off, I'm just going to kind of pre-oil it a little bit here. Okay, I don't need to get oil up on the spring or, or my thread will be slippery. I won't have good bobbin thread tension. Okay. So I've lifted this up and pushed it to the side. I'm going to set my fork up on the position finger with this flat edge up here up on top of the bobbin case and then uh, move it left onto the race. Now that looks pretty good, but I'm, I'm not on the finger, so I know this part isn't properly up here. So I'm going to try it again. There we go. Now, I can, I can see the positioning finger up here in the fork. I can see that the edge of my bobbin case is sitting right on top of the hook. And I can see the base or the heel of the bobbin case is sitting on top of the hook so that means I'm on the race and I'll just test it by gently turning the hand wheel making sure that my hook will slide through there and it does then I'm going to push the positioning bracket off of the spring and it'll click down against the case like that okay and then I'm just going to um, turn my hand wheel, make sure that it glides around, it, it doesn't rattle, it doesn't make a grating or grinding sound. That means that I'm on the hook. I mean that, that I'm on the hook race. Now the place that Singer says to oil that race is right here just to the right of the little finger you see the top of the hook there okay you see put just put a drop on the top edge of that hook and then when you rotate it it'll slide into the slot on the bobbin case and in turn that will get it on the race Okay, voila. So I guess at this point, 
Um, I guess I'll go ahead and put my clean um, brushed off clean and lightly oiled feed dog back I'll screw that back in because that that would normally be in place when you want to put on or take off that slide plate you don't have to take the feed dog off and you don't have to take the feed dog off to remove the bobbin case I'll, I'll, more on that in a minute so I have to get my two screws started in there now those of you that have very good tactile whatever they call it touch with your fingers and and can get them started with your fingertips wow that's probably the probably the best if you can do that I can't always get in there I think I got that one started so I'll put it in get it started I'm going to try that with my other one that went pretty good but you got the presser bars in is in your way here on this one but I'm, I might be able to get it started I put a drop of oil in the hole on the feed dog lifting bar where I'm screwing these screws into and that helped because I am just kind of putting putting starting them in with my fingertip hey next I'm going to take my uh, screwdriver bit and and kind of snug them up most of the way now you can actually uh, get this feed dog in crooked where it'll rub against the slots of the needle plate so if you take one put one screw in and tighten it down real hard and then put the other screw in it it might be a little unbalanced or yikes or crooked so I would uh, not tighten them all the way almost but I want to be able to wiggle that feed dog and get it what I feel flat and centered there see there's a little bit of a little bit of movement in there still see how they can move a little so I want to be sure that they're uh, flat where you put where you put the screw in that bar across the back I want them flat there then I'm going to just hand tighten that as tight as I can with my fingers and I'll come back to this one and hand tighten that one yay then I'm going to use my little uh, mini ratchet because I that that works for me to to get it in there to tighten them up let's see if I can sneak it under the presser bar it's got this little knurled knob on the top this Chapman screwdriver set and the bits so that you can kind of twist it by hand a little bit okay not all the way tight but almost come over to this one and rotate that tip to line up with the slot this one I'm going to go ahead and tighten completely <laughs> and then I'll come back to that other one and give it one last little <clears throat> there so if you do want to take this off and 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 of course you don't want to take your feed dog off every time you clean the bobbin maybe you do but I wouldn't so what you want to do is turn the hand wheel until the feed dog comes up high as high as as it will go because that gives you a little more clearance in here when you when you lift this 
positioning bracket and slide it to the right and you twist the bobbin case off of the race okay gives you a little more room up here gives you a, a little more room here to lift the the fork up off of that positioning pin whereas if you if your feed dog is down and forward it's much harder to do so you want the feed dog up and to the back okay and then same same story go and kind of get your fork lined up in there and the edge of the bobbin case onto the top of the hook and twist the base in turn the hand wheel to test that it that it glides easy okay I, I've got the bobbin case set properly in there feels to me then I will push this over and lock it in ta-da nice okay now to, to put when you when you put the slide plate back on you're gonna start back here and you can have the needle plate on too when you do this but you just want the hook now at the lowest position right and where's my needle plate here um, I went ahead and squirted some a cleaner in here and just just brush brushed it out you know with the old uh, toothbrush here to get any lint and stuff out and it's funny when you when you put this back on after cleaning it, it, it it's kind of hard to slide for a while so what what I like to do is uh, put some oil in these uh, slots here just just put a little bit of oil and a little on this side and then I'm just going to run a small drop of oil where the where this plate right here slides and I take my little oil brush and just wipe it in there good and there so to get this uh, back on now we go past the tension spring and we, and we put it up there the way we had pulled it off of that tension spring we're going to we're going to put it back on that way and I'm just going to come here and get it close to the spring and just gently lift up one corner of that spring and and slide it into the slot and then push this back at a little bit of an angle so that I can lift up this other corner uh oh yeah oh, I missed it lift up this other corner I'm trying to keep this one from coming out <laughs> come on you yeah okay maybe I'll do better this way and this way oh there we go see now then yeah they're both tight now I can I can yeah see it's a little when you clean it so good like that it's a little rough sliding for a while until it kind of gets broken back in or something I don't know but um, I'm going to check to see how my how I feel my tension is on this if it feels too loose then uh, or too tight I can go down here on this uh, adjustment screw and remember it's backwards so I would turn it to the to the right to loosen it let's see if that made it easier to slide not really see but it's a little bit it's a little bit whoops that didn't make it easier to slide that's just because of the super clean steel on aluminum but it kind of made it a little wobbly I think so I'm going to go back up here 
and turn it to the left to tighten the tension on that screw. That's as tight as it'll go. That actually made it uh, slide a little bit easier. But it's nice and tight now. It's not, it's not going to slip off. It's not going to feel weird. Beautiful. It's all clean too. So then to put my needle plate back on, I'm going to turn my hand wheel to... Uh, you know, I, I said earlier, uh, when you go to put this plate on, you want to get the hook low. But I meant the feed dog. When you're going to slide the plate on and off, you don't want to drag it on these uh, sharp edges. So you, you would put the feed dog as low as it will go when you want to pull the plate off or pull it back on. And you also want it as low as it will go when you slide your needle plate on and off. So I'll put my throat plate position bracket all the way left in the unlock. And because my feed dog is down, it'll just slide right in there. And I can lock it back in place and close my plate. And that's it. There's a short video about the, the parts in the bobbin area. Okay. And this might have been news to a lot of people. And, and you, you might have to replace that spring. Sometimes when you buy a used machine, people have, have uh, you know, had this open and lifted the machine by this. Or trying to put it back on and not knowing that it goes on and off by sliding it forward. Uh, you know, not to the back. Right? And then they might have bent or broken off a tip on that tension spring. So you might even have to find somebody selling a used spring. And, and that's a part sometimes uh, manufacturers have made new ones. You know, because it's common enough that they get bent or broken that they, there actually are some new ones on the market. I usually stick with the vintage parts when I replace a part if possible because to me they're just made stronger, you know, back in the 50s and 60s. Thanks for tuning in on the bobbin area parts of a Singer Model 403A, Regina. <laughs> I think better, next time I better work on this tension. So it fell off again while I was working on it, so maybe that'll be all the nose end parts up here. Uh, got videos for those and now I've done the bobbin area parts so maybe we'll head up here and do the tension next but whatever it is I I uh, will put a link to the um, playlist uh, right here at the end of the video in the 20 second ending slide and I hope you'll come back and see some more of the videos for Regina or any of the other 400 plus videos that are on my channel. Take care. Thanks for watching.